Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. In this video, we'll be taking another look at the Casio graphical calculator and how we can use it to solve exam style problems taken from a real A-level S1 statistics and probability paper. For those of you following an IB higher level mathematics or IB biology course, you'll also find the style of the questions spookily familiar, so please keep watching. In the last video, we looked at the single variable calculation function and we used it to find mean and standard deviation. This time, we'll be looking at how the Casio graphical calculator copes with two variable or bivariate data. We'll be using the graphing tool to plot a scatter graph and the two variable calc function to generate a value for the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient or PMCC. So here's an exam question. It concerns itself with the city council's attempt to reduce traffic congestion by charging motorists to enter the city centre. The council started with a charge of £4 in the first year and increased it by £2 in each subsequent year. It is always important to read the question carefully as the context can give strong clues as to the expected answer. In this case, we would expect to find that as the council increased the charge, the number of vehicles entering the city would fall. This would imply a strong negative value for PMCC and so if our calculation doesn't show us this, it should alert us to the fact we've made a mistake somewhere along the line and we should probably go back and check it. It's much better to find out that you've made a mistake whilst you're still in the exam hall and you can do something about it rather than when the results come in. OK, so let's start entering the data into the calculator and see what it tells us. So first up, put the calculator in stats mode, which is two on the main screen. This brings up this screen, which has multiple columns to enter lists of data. This time, because we have bivariate data, we need two lists to hold our values from the data table. Before we put the new data in, let's clear out anything that's already in the memory from the last time we used it. First, we press F6 to bring up the second menu of functions, followed by F4, which is the delete all function and F1 to confirm. This will clear out the values in the currently selected list. Now, move the cursor into the second column and then press F4 followed by F1 again to get rid of list two. Right, so having now tidied up, we can start entering our new data. We will use list one to hold the charges in pounds and list two to hold the average number of vehicles per day. So. 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Then we tap right on the arrow for list 2 and we enter the next set of values 2 2 2.4, 2.5, 2.2, 2.3, 2.0, 1.8, 1.7, and 1.5. Done. Right, so F6 brings us back to the original menu of functions and we want to tap F1 to graph the data. The calculator lets you store up to three presets for graphs and you can press the set button to define what you want these to be. At the moment, I have graph one set up for box plots. I've got graph two set to draw a scatter graph and graph three to draw a pie chart but you can set these to whatever you want from the 20 or so available graph types that the calculator can draw. Now for the scatter graph, you will need to tell the calculator where to pull its X and Y values from. So we are using list one and list two for these. The frequency should be one, and you can choose what sort of mark type that you want to show on the graph. Once you have this all set up, press escape and select the preset you used. Now I used graph 2, so I'm going to press F2. Unsurprisingly, we have a scatter graph showing strong negative correlation. This fits with the context, as we suspected that as the charge went up, it would drive the number of vehicles down. Now sadly, we can't just print this out and stick it in our exam paper, but we can use it as a visual check that our hand-drawn graph is correct. Once the graph is drawn, you can then use the trace function, which is shift F1, to show the actual plot points and their values. And you can use this to double check the values on your, your drawn graph. So having drawn your graph, 
and checked it with your calculator, we are ready for the main event, calculating PMCC. Now, PMCC is always a number between 1 and minus 1, with numbers close to 1 showing strong positive correlation and close to minus 1 showing strong negative correlation. We have already noted that our scatter graph clearly shows strong negative correlation, so we are expecting an answer around negative 0.9 here. Right, let's hit the F2 calc button and quickly check set to make sure we are configured correctly for bivariate data. Check that the 2 var x list points to list 1 and that the 2 var y list points to list 2. If it doesn't for some reason, you can press the list button and set it correctly. Once you're happy that this is all correct, press exit followed by F2 2 var to see what numbers we get. Now, you can see it generates the totals, mean, standard deviation, along with the min and max values for both the X and the Y datasets. We could use this screen to copy down the totals if they are not already given in the question itself. For the PMCC calculation, we're going to need the N value, which is the number of elements. We're going to need sigma X, sigma Y, sigma X squared, sigma Y squared, and sigma XY. So let's write all those down. N is 8. Sigma X is 88. Sigma X squared is 1136. Now scrolling down, we can see that Sigma Y is 16.4. Sigma Y squared is 34.52. And Sigma XY is 168.6. Now, whilst your calculator will also churn out a value for PMCC, we will need to show some method to get all the available marks for this question. So let's write down the PMCC formulae. We would normally need to evaluate these free formula and then sub our answers into the fourth to find PMCC. But as we are smart, we're going to use the calculator to take the sting out of this a little to minimize our efforts and so allow more time for other more challenging parts of the exam paper. We are going to do all four at once. This way, we don't actually need to evaluate each section separately, thus minimizing the risk of making a calculation error, and we can just write down the final answer. So here goes. It's a bit of a beast, but with a little care, it's not going to be too bad. Now, there's no need to actually type this bear moth into the calculator. We just need to go to exit and choose F3 for the regression function. We will cover the regression function in much more detail in the next video. For now, we just need to select F1 for X or linear regression. Now both the Y on X and the X on Y regression functions will both give us the same values for PMCC. So it doesn't matter which of, uh, which of these two functions I choose. So let's just go for AX plus B. PMCC is given by this R value. So I just need to copy that down to an appropriate degree of accuracy minus 0 0.960 to three significant figures. Done. Easy peasy. And our answer is reassuringly close to minus one as we expected it to be. Now, the mark scheme states two method marks and one accuracy mark for this question. You get the first method mark for a correct substitution into any S formula and a second for a correct substitution into the R formula. Now, we've done both at the same time. We will get the third and final accuracy mark for writing down the correct value of PMCC. Now there's no getting around the fact that you need to learn these formula and you will also need to be able to substitute correctly into them to gain the method marks. However, the graphical calculator has done all the hard number crunching so you don't have to, saving you both time and minimizing the risk of making a typing error in this otherwise long and intricate calculation. So that's all for this video. You should now know how to use your Casio graphical calculator to plot a scatter graph and to find PMCC the easy way. Please like if you found it useful and leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. In the next video in this series, I will be delving into the linear regression function in much more detail. I'll be showing you how to find a Y on X and X on Y regression line, along with some explanation on when you should use one or the other. So please hit subscribe so you will be notified of this and any future uploads.
Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.